Hi everyone, I want to discuss a shortcut in section 4.7 that will help you figure out the ranges of these inverse trig functions quickly. Because if I were to ask you, what is the range for the inverse sine function, you might go, oh no, uh, I guess I should look at the original sine function, figure out what piece I need, the restricted domain I would want, and then that becomes the range. It might take a while. So let's talk about principles. So when I pick a piece of this original sine wave that passes the HLT and that has the same range, I'm picking this red piece here. And when I consider this restricted sine function, what am I doing? I'm getting a restricted sine function where there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the X coordinates here and the Y coordinates here. The X coordinates here basically correspond to angle measures in radians from negative pi over two to pi over two. And the Y coordinates correspond to sine values, Y coordinates on the unit circle. So I want to have a one-to-one -one relationship between angle measures and sine values. So what's our shortcut? Remembering the ranges of inverse trig functions. Inverse sine. All right. I want an interval of angle measures in radians where I will pick up each sine value exactly once. Sine values correspond to y coordinates on the unit circle negative one here, positive one here. Will you agree that if I consider the right half of the unit circle, I pick up every y coordinate, every sine value between negative one? and positive one. And what is the interval of angles in radians that I normally associate with the right half of the unit circle? Well, the closed interval from the angle I associate with a south pole is usually negative pi over two, comma, the angle I associate with a north pole is usually positive pi over two. And guess what? That's the range for the inverse sine function is this interval of angle measures in radians where I pick up each y coordinate along the unit circle exactly once. So there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the angles in here and the y coordinates in here between negative one and positive one. For example, there's only one angle in here with a sine value of zero, zero. There's only one angle in here with a sine value of one, pi over two and so forth. Well, what about cosine and inverse cosine? What is the range for inverse cosine? Well, look at the unit circle. Cosine values correspond to x coordinates. How do I pick up each x coordinate on this unit circle exactly once? And what is the interval of angles I would normally associate with that? Well, To pick up each x coordinate on this unit circle exactly once, how do I pick up each x coordinate from negative one to positive one exactly once on this unit circle? I'd probably take the top half of the unit circle. And what are the angles I normally associate with this top half? The closed interval from zero radians over here to pi radians over here. And that's going to be the range for inverse cosine. And there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the angles in this interval and the various cosine values, the various x coordinates on this unit circle. There's only one angle in here whose cosine value is one, zero radians. There's only one angle in here whose cosine value is negative one, pi radians, and so forth. Now, what about inverse tangent? How do I pick up every tangent value exactly once? Tangent is slope. How do I pick up each slope value exactly once in such a way where I don't have to worry about undefined slopes? What piece of this unit circle would I look at and what angles would I want to consider? All right, how do we pick up each tangent value or slope exactly once? I would probably take these angles in quadrants four and one. You would agree 
Then I pick up negative slopes, all possible negative slopes in quadrant four. I pick up a slope of zero at zero, angle zero, radians. I pick up all possible positive slopes in quadrant one. But remember, tangent of pi over two is undefined and tangent of negative pi over two is undefined. So I don't want to reach these endpoints over here. How do I pick up each tangent value or slope value exactly once? I consider the open interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. And unlike the other ranges, this is an open interval because I don't want the endpoints over here. This is the range for inverse tangent because there's a one-to-one -one relationship between every angle in this interval and every tangent or slope value between here and here. If you give me any real number, any negative real number, zero or any positive real number, there's only one angle in here with that corresponding slope or tangent value. Here's the range for inverse tangent. So to quickly figure out the inverse trig functions ranges, consider the unit circle. What piece of the unit circle would give you each value of the original function for sine, cosine, or tangent, and then figure out what angles you'd normally associate with that part of the unit circle. All right, next time, we're going to talk about evaluating these inverse trig functions.